it's slightly less deleterious or maybe a lot less deleterious if a man cheats than a woman cheats. It, cheating is bad, either regardless, but I think it's more reparable if a man does it than a woman does it. I had a, a bunch of girls in the studio and I asked them this question. So one of the issues is, uh, do you think it's cheating if your boyfriend watched porn? And the most of them said no, they didn't think it was cheating. And then I said, do you think it's cheating if a, a man is like sending DMs to a girl on OnlyFans trying to get re responses back? And it was like this really weird moral incongruency because they were like, yeah, that would be way fucking worse. Can you guys see how that might be a little bit worse? Because it's not non-contextual anymore. It's contextual, even though it's fake, even though he's really texting with a Filipino who, who's pretending to be you, it's, my, my point is, it, can you see how that would be a lot worse? My litmus for cheating is not whether it's contextual or non-contextual. Yeah. If my boyfriend is watching porn, that is not my boyfriend. That's my own <laughs> okay, double Wow, standard. so if your boyfriend watches porn at all, that's cheating. <laughs> this porn, is so... strip clubs, leering for too long, hooters, anything. My Instagram. This is so great. <laughs> Following Jasmine Jafar on Instagram. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, kidding. No. Um, Jasmine, do you feel the same way? Is, it, no. is that cheating? For me, cheating is just what violates the boundaries of the relationship. Uh, of course, so I, I think it's weird when these people, So maybe I just talk a lot and I'm annoying, but like I feel like when I date someone, I talk about everything. Thing. Like I'm like, oh, what makes you uncomfortable? What makes you un like? Yeah. I figure out the boundaries of our relationship really easily, so I'm not like sitting in a room like, oh, would that be cheating? What if he's doing this and we just didn't talk about it? Like I feel like we have clear rules what's okay and what's not okay, and I can see why a lot of people would cut the line there, and yeah. maybe I would be one of those people, but I don't think one is automatically cheating for everybody and one isn't. Yeah, or, you know. No, I'm just, I'm just interested, like not just what Faro thinks is yeah. cheating, not everyone, because like for instance, I'll, I'll tell you like there's a massive red pill dogma about well, you're not supposed to have your girlfriend on only. Fans, or yeah. not only fans, but on Instagram at all. And I'm like, my girlfriend's a world champion bikini model. She can be on Instagram yeah. all she wants. I don't yeah. really give a shit about that. Um, that's not the issue. We have different lines. For me, and I, my girlfriend's not gonna like me saying this, but if a girl, if I knew a girl and she had an OF and she wasn't even posing nude, like Caitlin Ronk or, or Kindly Myers, are two good friends of mine, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any moral uh, problem with that whatsoever. I think the line for me would be sex with other men that aren't me. Okay, yeah. I think so that would then be then that's a line that a lot of people have, yeah. but some people might be like, oh no, the line for me is having an Instagram at all. Yeah. So it's different for everyone. I think we can say like, oh, this is the majority of people would fall into yeah. this bucket, but yeah. Yeah, I think that's that would be the issue. And that's where I see a lot. Like we have people come on the show that a lot of uh, uh, adult actresses will come on the show and they'll talk about a monogamous relationship they're in while they still film with other mm -hmm. men. And so that's a boundary that they've created. And then, then the chat obviously comes in and calls their boyfriend a cuck. Like that's essentially what happens. And so there's a like a, an ambiguity there because there's what's moral and then there's what's good for you. And you've yeah. made this, you've yeah. made this perception before. Like I do think like when we talk about eating cheeseburgers, that is not a moral, but it's not always good for you because of the sodium content. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is the same type of situation. Uh, when in Dr. Buss, in his other book, uh, When Men Behave Badly, he talks about 79% of the time when a woman cheats, she falls in love with her, her fair partner and only 30% of the time for a man. And because of that, I've said it might be, it's slightly less deleterious or maybe a lot less deleterious if a man cheats than a woman cheats. It, cheating is bad, either regardless, but I think it's more reparable if a man does it than a woman does it. And so in a polyamorous relationship, what I've seen, again, this is anecdotal, what I've seen is that when a woman goes strays out and it's like, hey, I'm going to have sex with multiple male partners, that's kind of the end of the relationship. And when a man does it, it's like he can come back to his wife and kids. And we see this with a 25% divorce rate with men, men filing for divorce 25% of the time and women filing for divorce 75% of the time. So I don't know what you guys, think about that specific go ahead no i was just gonna say I, I think that proves to me that the divorce rate is pretty arbitrary if we're saying that it's not deleterious for a man to cheat while also then pretending that everything's good with his no, no, it, it definitely is deleterious okay so the cheating is bad my point is that i think it's more deleterious i think it's actually more moral for the woman to cheat and then like you're saying if that correlates to then her being more likely to drop the relationship that's better than living this like dishonest double life and when so, she's so, going back to her correct. husband and kids so, while fucking another man on the side the which is what you're yeah, saying the question, you're question wasn't doing. the question wasn't about morality though the question was about the end of the relationship like whether or not the relationship's going to end and by the way that's where like the divorce yeah. attorney is going to argue with the so track the 75% of women who are or i think it was 70 maybe 75 now who are the ones initiating divorce they're doing so because they've moved on or because a lot of them is because the guy cheated <laughs> yeah yeah for sure no no i'm not saying yeah. that i'm uh -huh. saying more likely it's outside of one standard deviation for women filing for divorce instead of men yeah but you we, but the reason for that i don't think has to do with the fact that they fell in love with their their affair partner well 70 percent of women refer, married women in a recent survey said that they have a backup partner in mind and so it would it would indicate that women do like what so women that, are far less likely to be repartnered after a divorce though right but they're also le because women are less likely in less interested in casual sex like le women are less interested no repartnered in, so it doesn't just mean like sex but like they they are less likely to have another person within two years after they divorce or even like ever than right. men are well, got it, got it. 
uh, I think well, the, the point where I was, I was going with this specifically was the concept with, with dealing with divorce, uh, specifically like the argument between the trad cons and the divorce lawyers, mm -hmm. where James Sexton is going to say something to the effect of like, why are you letting these people stay in these bad marriages? Instead, make marriage harder. And then you have Andrew Wilson go off and say like, no, we should never, ever leave marriages. And anything yeah. like no fault divorce is the reason why we're having so many divorces in the first place. So, I mean, I just think it, it's an interesting uh, concept. Where do you, you fall? Say, huh? Where do you fall? Man, I, I just really like I because it's really weird because I'm a Christian, but at the same time, I believe in evolution and the Big Bang. Uh, it's one of these is situations where it's like, I don't want to tell anybody else how to live their yeah. life unless you're touching my kids or fucking stealing from me. I really don't have that big of an issue with it. Okay. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. And that's what I found. And by the way, like Nicolette Shea, Karen Lee watches my show, right? Mm -hmm. Nicolette Shea is coming on my show tonight. I'm I'm, I'm friends with fucking Madison Ivy. For me to sit there and be like, oh, you guys are morally ambiguous. I'd be the worst person. I'd be the yeah, biggest yeah, hypocrite yeah. in the world yeah. to say something like that. So I can, I can totally you're see what I'm going You're one of the good ones, Michael. <laughs> one of the good ones, I believe. All right. Were you going to say something? Oh no, I just oh. think women should initiate divorce more. Like I've heard that <laughs> the cheating rate for, you know, male adultery is like 50% and that's irregardless of whether the woman is a good partner or not. I don't not. think it's 50. I've heard 30. I've never heard 50. I've heard 50. from David Buss actually it's 50%. I, that's across cultures though. Yeah, 50. I, I've not, in the United States I've never heard 50. I've heard 50 and then it's like I said it's it doesn't matter whether they're even happy with their partner or not. So I think that just shows to me, like especially red pillars and trad cons will typically attribute like cheating to whether, you know. 50% for what? Cheating for men? 50% men, of men cheating? 50% of male husbands cheating, yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I've heard, I've heard more, sim but I also know that sometimes like those are hard because they're all self-reported. Of so course, people, yeah. 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 That's that's a really difficult one to, uh, to, to uh, suss out. If you're watching this, I have a gift for you. Hit the link below and I will send you a private invite to my free community. And yes, it's absolutely free.